Bees. Thank you for tuning in. So this is a very, very um, important episode, like the major basis of why we even started this um, blog in the first place. So we're going to just be talking about what you should be doing in undergrad in order to ensure that, you know, you're a competitive applicant. And we're going to go, we're going to go beyond the academics. I see you here, like, grades are important, obviously, but there's way more than grades in order to make you a complete and well-rounded individual. So that's where we're starting off today on that. And the first thing we want to touch on is mentorship. I cannot stress this enough. Like, mentorship is incredibly vital. I'm going to let Trevor take over. Um, yeah, 100%. I think mentorship is one of the biggest things, especially what I think got a lot of us into medical school, yes. just knowing that there was somebody who did it before you and that someone was willing to pull you up into the trenches. Mm -hmm. um, you're always going to make mistakes throughout medical school. Um, the biggest thing is about having somebody who's willing to you know, guide you and show you the way, right? Um, as far as me, I had a mentor throughout college and when I did my master's in New York. Um, so I think he was the one who really told me, look, this is the route you need to go if you want to get into surgery. These are people you need to talk to. Um, you don't have to major in uh, biology if you yeah. want to get there. You know, you can major in whatever you want to do. There's too many ways to get to it. For sure, 100%. And I think we're going to talk more about going into AMEC and SNMA yeah, as we talk as well, but mentorship is key for much of So I actually agree with what both of them have said. Um, mentorship is extremely important. I think that it's definitely important, especially to find someone that looks like you and that can relate with you, so you can have a constant image of, of where you can be in the next five to ten years. Easy. So for example, if I, when, um, when I figured out, okay, I wanted to do medicine, I was like, okay, are there any um, black doctors in the area that I can shadow, that I can talk to, let them know that, hey, I'm interested in this field, mm -hmm. so they can like put me on game about what I should do, what obstacles I should avoid. Um, <clears throat> And not only that, finding a mentorship in life in general, in any um, field that you want to pursue, in any, uh, uh, what is it, topic, what is it? Endeavor. Yeah, endeavor. endeavor. Every, any endeavor. Find someone who has done it before you and just ask them for help. A lot of people yep. who are in, in quote unquote high positions love speaking to you, trying to educate, you know, trying to educate the, the younger people or the people underneath them on how to get into their position. Yep. And let's say they want to say no. The worst thing they can say is no, right? So put up the shots, bro. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to hit one. Sure, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, definitely. I, I definitely agree. Like, um, you know, in terms of just doing anything that you're, anything that you're doing, you know, you want somebody who's already done it before. You want somebody who's already made the mistakes, somebody who's been through the process so that they can just feed you back with a whole bunch of information so that you don't make the same mistakes. And the even thing to do yeah. is actually to learn from the mistakes of others. Learn from the you mistakes don't want to be suffering yeah. when someone tells you not to suffer. Of course, you know what I'm man. Like, make it easy on yourself. And I, I personally wish I got that point like a lot earlier. I didn't really know the importance of mentorship until my later years in undergrad. And I just want to shout out my guy, Lamar, right here. Um, like, really, really uh, influential figure in my life, man. Like, just being able to see him do so many things and just all the, the knowledge that he, he he just, you know, bestowed upon me, like, it really um, definitely helped me to get to where I am right now. And even just little things like going over my, my uh, medical school application, you know what I mean? Like, you want somebody who's really been through that. You want somebody who knows what they're looking for. So mentorship cannot... We cannot stress that enough. I think out of everything we're gonna talk about today, mentorship is the single-handedly most important wow. thing. Like, 100. take our take our word for it. Like, they, trust me. They will be the people who, when you apply to certain medical schools, let's say you apply to the medical school that your mentor is at, they'll be the person that vouches for you, that speaks to the dean of admissions. Mm -hmm. Hey, this guy's a solid candidate. You know, they'll give you that quote-unquote edge that that you might need to get into medical school. Yep. Once again, a lot of medical school is about what you know, but also like who you know too. So yeah. your mentor can help you in much more ways than just making sure your academics are straight. An important part of that though is once you realize that there's, it's about who you know, as a person, you gotta lose your pride, and if you want to find a mentor, you have to be uh, prideless and being full transparent in like what are your yeah. goals, what are you good at, what are you not good at, right? Because I feel like in medicine, everybody tries to up themselves, yeah. say you're good at everything, nobody's good at everything. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but the thing is about talking about your strengths and going with a mentor and then upping the things that you are good at, right? Mm -hmm. And that is what really makes you a good candidate, right? But in order to get to that point, you gotta be very vulnerable and you gotta be very transparent in saying, okay, this is who I am, 
this is what I like to do, this is what I'm good at, and this is what I failed at, right? Yeah. And then through the process, it's like, okay, we're gonna talk about what you're good at, right? Because you know about these failures, and that's probably a question that they ask on every interview too. Is, tell me one of the hardest uh, times of your life, or yeah. tell me a tribulation that you've gone through, a triumph. Um, and those are the important, those are the parts where you can uh, rise as an applicant. Really definitely, definitely, you are. definitely. So, definitely. so um, yeah, we touched on that. Now we're gonna sort of kind of slide it over to what are some of the other things that you should be doing in undergrad. We're gonna just um, start with talking about the pros. Well, I don't wanna say pros and cons, I'm more so, okay, should you major in STEM or should you not major in STEM? And for those who are not unaware of STEM, science, technology, engineering, um, mathematics. Yeah. You know, close. some of them are close, close. <laughs> I close. Think yeah, 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 I think, I think. Science, technology, um, engineering, and mathematics. mathematics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. And I'm gonna say, go ahead, major in STEM, okay? Well, maybe that's not devil's advocate. Maybe you guys are devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, never mind. <laughs> so, all right, so here's my thing, right? It's it's a myth that you have to major in science in order to get into med school. In fact, they love diversity, right? But here's my here's my take. I personally think majoring in in biology. The fact that I was able to take classes beyond your like your standard curriculum, which is like physics, OCHEM. Um, biology, chemistry. I was able to take courses such as neurobio, immunology, developmental biology, embryology. These are things that, these are classes that you're going to take in med school probably. So, um, not that it'll necessarily give you like an incredible academic um, advantage, but just being able to be familiar with it enables you to be comfortable with learning the material. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're sort of kind of like, you know, I've been there, I've done that, I got through it, boom. You know, I'm not too, I'm not too stressed about it. It's still difficult, you know, you still gotta put the work in, without a doubt. Like, you're gonna be like, how the hell did I forget all this stuff? But there's a certain sense of comfortability, a certain sense of confidence that um, you come in with majoring in like biochemistry or biology or chemistry. You know, you sort of kind of like weathered, weathered for this whole medical school, medical school process. So that's, that's my take, you know, take it with a grain of salt, as the case may be. But I'll let these guys go ahead and take over. I, I understand why you want to major in STEM. <laughs> I majored in STEM myself, so I get it. Um, do I think you have to major in STEM? No, I don't. And I, honestly, I think it's, I wouldn't say better, but it could be to your advantage not to major in STEM because what you're going to learn in medical school is what you're going to learn in medical school regardless, right? You can see this stuff a hundred thousand times, which is good, but you're going to forget some stuff anyway. Because there, there's just so, there's so much information, like, we're, we're almost graduating our first year, and there's things from the first semester that I don't remember, and I've seen yeah. it multiple times, right? Biochemistry, yeah. and I think there's more advantage you can bring into medical school, knowing having a background in business, um, because one, medicine is a business yeah. at the end of the day, whether you like it or not. Um, so having that business background could help you tremendously, especially when you get into the field and you're maybe if you want your own practice, right? Yeah, that's something that you're gonna have that not a lot of people are else gonna have. I think a lot of our classmates, if not all, have at least some background in biochemistry or bio general, right? There's prerequisites you have to take in order to take the MCAT regardless. And I think there was a stat that I saw that uh, bio majors actually performed the lowest on the MCAT in comparison to English majors and uh, like math majors, right? So, <laughs> Don't I mean, shots up there, no, it's, it's cool. not shots. It's just real, It's right? okay, man, it's okay. <laughs> there, there has to be some correlation, right? Um, I think that it, it could be very beneficial for you to just, you know, uh, spread your wings and see what else you can be good at bringing into this field because this is a, a field with not only racial diversity, but you have to bring something other than just a scientific mind. Yeah. Okay. 100% agree with my guy Trev, you know what I'm saying? I said um, in the last episode, I was a bio major at first. I ended up changing to nutritional sciences, still STEM related, but if I was to do it again, I would have um, majored in finance to did something business related because um, medical school is medical school but then learning how to let's say I didn't go to medical school right if I majored in, if I decided to become an engineer or do something uh, become a lawyer yeah. I probably still would have done something finance related money business related because at the end of the day I'm going to like make money right so I would want to be financially literate and educated on how that money would work yeah. outside of that in, in the field of medicine, you're going to be talking and interacting with your everyday common people, right? People from d diverse backgrounds, different type of interests. So it might be beneficial for you to um, 
major in maybe art or music or um, whatever, yeah. having a different perspective will allow you to relate to a patient. We have a, a classmate of ours who has been a um, who was a ballerina, I think, for like six years, right? Yeah. So imagine her talk, talking to a cheerleader, right? She'll be able to talk about different dance routines Important. that they did, maybe like how she was able to visit New York. So the next day that patient comes in to talk to her, they'll have that type of connection, that type of rapport, right? Yeah. Um, so medicine is diverse, right? Medicine is um, unique to each individual person. So you, you're going to learn the prerequisites, you're going to learn what's required in medical school regardless, right? So for example, let's say you were um, a music major, right? Regardless, you have to take those um, Courses and prerequisites before yeah. you go into medical school. So when you're, as you're majoring in music, your elective will be the prerequisites for medical school. Then you'll have something to talk about in your application. You have a different, you'll bring a different mindset to how you even approach practice problem because yeah. of your your music brain you know like y'all use the yeah. the artsy creative people use the different portion of their brain so imagine using the the creative portion of your brain and then the scientific portion of your brain to treat a patient yeah. and that's why I'm a, I'm a big proponent of not a big proponent just a proponent of following your passion while in undergrad because you'll never have the time to do it again at least in the immediate future right. so yeah. uh, a few of us took like all of us took two years off and in that time yeah. I took off or even um, in medical school, I mean, sorry, in undergrad, I was yeah. able to travel because I said, okay, I'm going to do this. Maybe mm -hmm. learning a different language, yeah. doing something that will help you long term and just develop you as a person, I think is the most important thing you should worry about in undergrad. And I think that's one of the most important things that was just said right there is mm -hmm. just as a physician, you are a person first, right? And then um, within that, you you're a person, but you're a scientist, and you're like an actual living person. Yeah. Right? You have to know how to be straight up. Because you don't want to be a square, man, yeah. like a robot. You don't want to do that. Go ahead. But it's like, I've met some of the most brilliant people in just medicine in general, just with, within our class, right? Yeah. Yeah. And just doing my master's. And they're all very scientific based people. But at the end of the day, the most people that I'm impressed with are the people who can tell me like how to do ed video editing, yeah. <laughs> show me how to play music, and show me different okay. things like arts. And yep. <laughs> my roommate is real big in playing music. I spend a lot of my time just sitting and listening to him playing music, just because it, it's, it's fascinating to see we can transition from studying eight hours, ten hours, twelve hours a day, and then actually playing music. We're talking about business. We're talking about things that um, he read in politics. My yeah. guy Derek talks about sci-fi like it's. That's gonna take some time. But no, so, it's those things that really make a person right, who they are. Right. When, you, when you go into a doctor's office as a patient, the person that you want to talk to is a person who watches the basketball just like you. Mm -hmm. The person who, oh, who, who this traveled is to France, traveled to the case with you, went to Amsterdam and told you all the yeah, things he did in Amsterdam. Definitely. And then when it gets down to it, he can also solve your problems. And I think the biggest point to take away from this is like, regardless of whether you major in STEM, regardless of whether you major in something like maybe social sciences or arts, and whatever the case is, use it, do very well in it, but use it to your advantage and, and see how you can apply it to medicine. You know what I mean? Right. So, so with this, we're talking about research. Now, do you need to do research as an undergrad to get into medical school? Of course, right? Um, not only because it helps you get into medical school and like it looks good on your CV, but because you can build relationships with that. Personally, as an undergrad, I did a couple research projects um, that were in the wet lab. I'm not really big in doing wet lab I research. Hate that clear. What so? So just describe for them, like, what's the difference between a wet lab and maybe okay. something else? So the difference between a wet lab and clinical is, in wet lab, you're mostly working with bacteria or you're doing PCRs I on bet. DNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's what you see in the brochures in the medical school. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, the guy was, you know, you have that, you have those guys in your undergrad medical school. They're so I happy. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really good and praise to people who do that. Um, but I like more of the contact, and uh, now that I'm in medical school, I'm seeing that there's a different aspect to research. So I'm really big into orthopedics, mm -hmm. so I want to do more case-based research and going over cases that are a little peculiar in the field um, and doing that uh, more so, um, especially with the higher, um, with specialties that are harder to get into. Uh, yeah. You're gonna have to do research that's geared towards that, right? When you're in medical school. Mm -hmm. But before you get into medical school, yeah. I think it's good to just get your feet wet and get into anything that you can. Because once, like I said, it looks good on your CV, but it also 
lays the basis for yeah. how research should be conducted. You know. So I will say one thing, maybe a little bit different from what you said. I don't necessarily think you have to do research, but doing research can only make your application. No, no, you have to do research. I think you have to. Not necessarily. For real? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, hey, listen, not necessarily. I would still do but, research. But hey, honestly, continue. listen. Continue. Do research. <laughs> yeah. I fully, fully, fully recommend that you do research just because it shows that you're curious about science. You're just more than what you're looking at in the textbook. Can you take data? Can you, like, make, you know, gather, interpret it, and make a conclusion out of it? And that's something that medical schools absolutely love to see. And really, no pressure. I mean, for those who are maybe, like, graduating, if you didn't do research, don't feel as if like the world is, is ending, like you're, you're, you know, you have no shot at medical school. No, not at all. But for those who are in undergrad, like if you can, definitely, definitely do it. You know, reach out to a professor, you know, ask around and, you know, try to find those opportunities. And in, in terms of the research, I, I know this sounds crazy. I didn't even know research really was a thing until my junior year. Like if, if, if I got to keep it real with you, I was just like, wait, undergrad students can do that? Like when it clicked, I was like, wow. So, but I just knew that I wanted, I wanted to be as, I wanted to be as, as varied and as, as um, applicable as I can, I can be. You know what I mean? To just show that, like, you know, I've dabbled in this, I've dabbled in that. So I did research for a year during my senior year. I was in a wet lab, you know, working with doing transformations and, and helping like the grad students and things of that nature. Um, it wasn't like incredibly intense, but it was something that enabled me to like gain appreciation and gain gain appreciation just for like the whole scientific basis of research and, and adding knowledge onto the onto the world. You know what I mean? It was just some, it was it was a pretty cool experience, you know. So I I definitely say if you can, without a doubt, do research. It's only gonna make you better. Yeah. Only. I'm a big proponent of research. You should yeah. definitely should do it. But you in undergrad you have so much time. Find a research topic that you like about so that you'll be interested in it. Yeah. For example, my, I, I did two research projects before I applied to medical school. Um, one was in the wet lab, man. Hey. <laughs> it was cool, but it wasn't for me. Like, I'm the type of person, like I said, I like a little bit of action. I can't be in a lab for like eight hours, you know what I'm saying? So I had to be real with myself. So I ended up doing um, another research study, which was within the community. It's actually kind of like community service, too. It was very interesting. It was related to nutrition. I, honestly. Related to like nutritional sciences, it was like about um, like helping feeding like needy Texans in within the area. Yeah. So I found a way to like bring that into like cover like science, nutrition, people that I'm gonna interact with on a daily basis, medicine. So that was really dope. So um, I don't think research is a requirement, but it's one of those unwritten requirements. So bro, if you yeah, have yeah, I like that unwritten, unwritten, unwritten um, requirement. Yeah. yeah. So now we're gonna talk about like the importance of like community service. Yes. Um, ultimately, as a doctor, you are a servant to the community. So um, going out and just talking to people who you're going to interact with, getting to know what they like, you know, getting to know their traditions, getting to know the people, the resources there, that would be very vital for you as a, as a um, as a physician, and I feel like uh, Trev can expound more about some more, more on that. Yeah, so community service, um, I think when I was an undergrad, I did a lot of community service, um, not only on campus, but outside of campus. So I was involved in a lot of organizations on campus. I was in an organization called Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity, the best fraternity hey, ever created. No lies. <laughs> hey, Alpha Alpha. I'm just a, I'm just a GDI. I'm a goddamn individual, folks. <laughs> and proud. <laughs> and proud. Yeah, it was, you know, we did a lot of community service through that, but then I also had the opportunity to do a community service through like um, study abroad programs. So I did a, a nine week program in Zambia where we actually went into oh. the communities. Uh, Communities that were highly uh, infected with HIV, and we got to figure out um, what the women were doing in order to raise money for their own community. We got to build tippy taps, where it's just like sanitary uh, ways that women could wash their hands, and um, we built a library. So it was, it was things like that that really made me realize that um, medicine goes beyond what we see like on a daily yeah. basis, right? There's people living differently in different ways every single day, yeah. and um, we need to keep that in mind as we're growing into Definitely. physicians. Definitely. Yeah. Agree, it's more than meets the eye, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, as far as community service, don't do it just because it'll look good. Do yeah. something that you actually love doing. For me, I love mentorship, so anytime I have an opportunity to do mentorship or talk to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, I really take the initiative to try to do that. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely, definitely agree with you, bro. And in terms of just like community service, um, shout out to my, shout out to the Maps fam. Uh, just first off, you know, I was able to just 
be exposed to so much and just learn more about you know my environment through community service whether it's you know um, helping at a local uh, a, a pantry or um, definitely going to Albany High School we went to Albany High School at least once a week just you know talk about things that are going on in the world whether it was like the Ebola outbreak um, or just like major global events and just being able to like help kids and just talk to them and just give them the confidence that they can do what they want to do. Um, community service is just something that's just great and it provides so many different talking points because through community service you're going to develop as a person as well. You know being able to put your shoes in somebody who's maybe less fortunate or even if they're not less fortunate just being able to be selfless and you know give your time is, is something that like you know is just something that you know you can't you can't take for granted and it just makes you a better uh, well-rounded individual um, just just generally generally speaking and um, there's so there's I mean there's so many like different opportunities I've had even through community service that's that's another thing that people, I don't think people realize speak on there's a lot of opportunities that you can gain through community service not to sound like you're just doing it just for that reason but like I was at, I was at actually able to meet uh, the mayor of Oni Mayor Kathy Sheehan through um, a lot of do a lot of like community service events, whether it was whether it was um, helping to set up for all for, for Albany Day or just things of that nature. I was able to meet like high, very influential people at these community service events and use that as an opportunity to network as well while giving back. You know, so um, community service is just definitely something that you should you should be doing. And there's so many different ways to do it. So many, so many, so many different ways. You can have fun with it. You know. Um, yeah, there was a really good initiative that we did at our old school, and it was called Medici. And the basis of it was is bringing high school students who are interested in medicine or just in science in general yeah. and bringing them to the actual medical school and we got to talk to them we brought them into the cadaver lab so that they can see the real anatomy of a person we went over yeah. um, quizzes and we did little games where they can see okay this is what we're learning in medical school and in reality like high school students are learning a lot of information and if you're ever to get exposed to medicine i think that's the time to do it um, you should start shifting your curiosity in that direction, right? And as physicians or students, we need to take our time and really curate that curiosity, right? Yeah. Because some of you may wa be watching this and you guys probably have somebody who um, inspired you as a high school student, right? I personally didn't get inspired, inspired until a little bit down the line, yeah. but if I would have had that, you know, 5, 10, 15 years before that, I, it could have been substantially different, right? Because yeah. I know Every day that I wake up, this is something that I want to do. And if I would have known that 15 years ago, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could have geared that more towards that. So, yeah. yep. so. so guys, another uh, point of thing that you should do while in undergrad is shadowing. Um, if you want to be a physician, you want to know what a physician does on a normal yeah. basis, right? So shadowing, I think, is 100% important to see if you even like it. Because a lot of people have the dream of, oh, I want to be a doctor, but they don't know what it entails, the grind that you have to put in what it looks like on a daily basis. So um, finding a doctor to shadow is very important. I um, make, wanted to make sure that I could shadow a lot of physicians because they are, once you become a doctor, you have, you have the opportunity to specialize. So um, he will be a physician, I'll be, he will be a physician, I'll be, and I'll be a physician, but we can all three be doctors of, um, We'll be doctors of medicine, but I'll be specialized. Like he'll, he might be an orthopedic surgeon. I could be an anesthesiologist. He might be an orthopedic surgeon as well, right? So shadowing is 100% important in medical school. Um, without shadowing, you will not know what a doctor does on a day-to-day -day basis. So I made the, took the initiative to shadow different um, physicians, a uh, cardiothoracic surgeon, anesthesiologist, um, psychiatrist. Uh, I shadowed one other, uh, oh, even a pediatrician, right? So these are all different types of doctors. So immersing yourself and seeing if you can really deal with the grind, the day-to-day -day lifestyle, the ins and outs, and even them and having them give advice on giving advice to you on what you should do, what to expect, another form of mentorship, honestly, yeah. is just is key. So I'm gonna let uh, my guy uh, Derek uh, continue. Yeah, so um, just to just to like you know uh, second on that, being able to you know see what a doctor does, you know, is just of vital importance and I know that we touched on that so in my experience um, I'm luckily like I like I mentioned before I was able to um, scribe at uh, City MD and it was very very hands-on like I was I was you know bringing patients in you know doing vitals and pretty much you know breaking down of what the person in, came in here 
foot to the doctor and then seeing the doctor come in and how they went about the physical exam and everything of that nature and just being able, able to have that insight really gives you great perspective on what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life in that kind of sense you know so and I, there's many ways to um, go about um, shadowing whether it's like I said like for me it was through a job I also did volunteer in the hospital as well so I was able to see you know um, different aspects whether it was emer emergency medicine physician or even like the job that the nurses did you know even getting to learn about more, more, more what they do because you know medicine is a team sport we're going to be working with so many different um different um physicians and different aspects of healthcare whether you're working with a nurse or whether you're working with like an x-ray tech you know a you want a, a pa you want to be able to like Physical have therapist, exactly. pharmacist, yes you want to have the full you want to have the full insight you want, you want to have that full exposure you know so um that's like second to none that that uh that vibe that uh clinical experience and, and you know being just um exposed to to you know medicine beforehand yeah so. i agree um mm -hmm. shadowing is more so getting yourself exposed to medicine um as a undergrad you may not know what you want to do as far as long term with your life because there's just not enough time for you to shadow every single type of doctor like even in our first year i know i want to go into orthopedic surgery just because all my mentors have been in orthopedic surgery and that's what i've experienced since day one but a lot of people come in and they don't know what they want to do because there's just so many different types of so specialties. Many, a lot of ways to get it. You, there's no way to just cover it all during undergrad and there's really no way to cover it all in medical school. But a good thing that we do is rotations, right? So you get to see a little bit of everything. Um, and for the people who are undecisive, they get to pick what they want to do mm -hmm. in yeah. essence. Right. So shadowing, at the end of the day, gets your feet wet, exposes you to the field of medicine, exposes you to different fields of medicine. Yeah. And just a way to see if you really want to do this at the end of the day. Yep. And what's the point of applying to medical school if you've never seen what a doctor does, right? Yeah. So be real with yourself. And just on a, a quick point, um, through, you know, shadowing, through like, you know, volunteering clinical setting, that could be a recommendation letter right there. That could be an exposure to somebody who, you know, might help you through the process. So it's like with all these things that we're saying, you don't have to limit yourself to just doing, okay, I'm, I'm like clicking off a checklist. Like you could really be knocking out a whole bunch of stuff at once, you know what I mean? So there's just, this is a really a no-brainer. And with that being said, that's why uh, joining organizations is so important. Um, I think, next topic. especially SNMA, SNMA is huge, especially for wow. minority medicine. Um, we just got back from the AMEC conference that was held in Philadelphia, yep. and I think that was a real beautiful and pivotal experience. Um, I went there as an undergrad, and I got to experience it as an M1, so you get to see a little bit of the both sides of what it how you can interact with people as an undergrad trying to get into medicine and then being that M1 where undergrads are trying to interact with you and you can yeah, get that was, that was that was definitely a crazy experience. Like